a wash basin, a water pitcher, and a towel. Gospel according to John chapter 13. I would like to read again verse 3 to 5. Jesus knew the Father had given everything unto his hand and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes picking up a linen towel and he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had he was wearing. Just before the Passover feast, there were there are two significant event or symbolic event that took place in the life of Christ and the disciples. This is true to any Christians or any ordinary radicals or any disciples of Christ. The Last Supper and the washing of the feet. These are uh, three symbols uh, important to any ordinary radicals. The followers of Christ as you walk through the sandy, dusty roads of Palestinian desert, you will be greeted at the entrance of the door by a servant with a wash basin, water pitcher, and a towel. To wash their feet and their hands, no one understood the significance of this event than the first century disciples. It all happened at the same time where they sacrificed the Passover lamb, remembering their freedom from the Egyptian slavery. It, it is the commemoration of freedom and deliverance. Even you can smell it in the air. You will wash my feet? Peter said, no, this is not your job. You are our master. You are our king. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. Washing someone's feet or hand is the job of a menial servant, the powerless, the ordinary. A water basin, water pitcher, and a towel are the working tools of those who are poor, those who are the servants, those who are slaves in that particular context. This is the job of uh, anyone with low values and little values to use this wash basin, water pitcher, and a towel. When the disciples entered into the house to celebrate the Passover meal, they just intentionally skipped the tradition of washing their feet, washing their hands. Intentional omission or intentional ignorance, intentional forgetfulness or intentional negligence. Sigmund Freud or the psychodynamic approach within psychotherapy used this technique to identify the core issue while narrating uh, or the story or analyzing the dream or, or while helping the clients. Motivated forgetfulness or forgetting is part of a defense mechanism which is a forceful forgetfulness, a conscious or unconscious motives. This is also a coping technique with people uh, who are dealing with trauma. It is a conscious coping strategy. The idea of motivated forgetting begins with the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche or Sigmund Freud. This is the repression of memories as a form of self-preservation. Nietzsche wrote that the man must forget in order to move forward. He stated that it is, a, it is a defense mechanism. It is an act that we do it, you know, intentionally that so that we can survive, we can cope with everyday life. 
the disciples were all equal or looked greater to one another so they could not perform this menial job or take the wash basin, the water pitcher and a towel. It was not their task. It was not their duty. It was beneath them. It is not the task of a self-honored, self-uplifted or self-motivated disciple. It was beneath them. They pass the water basin, the water pitcher and a towel to some extent not even knowing they were there. I call it an intentional ignorance. The text is getting ready to bring this contrasting idea from the shadow uh, to the light, shadow to the reality. Jesus taking this washing, a wash basin, water pitcher and a towel brings light to the shadow of our own intentional ignorance. In the serenity prayer we confess that, O oh God and Heavenly Father, Grant us the serenity to my serenity of mind to accept the things the text says in verse 3 Jesus had all the power given to him by the Father. When you know that you are the most powerful in, in, in any given situation, what do you do with such power? Do you use it to exploit others, take advantage of the situation? What do you do with the power, fame and authority? Jesus has all the power and authority under heaven. He is from another world. All supremacy, all power over everything, all command, all the resources. When I see who uh, claim to have all the money, all the resources, you know, and in some context says born with the golden, you know, uh, tablewares, golden spoon. What do you do with such power? But Christ noticed the water basin, the water pitcher and the towel. The contextual contrast here is between a black stretch crystal limousine and the one with a water basin. Uh, uh, someone with a luxurious Chrysler limousine and a medical staff working in the emergency ward. You know, someone who is cleaning a dirty toilet and the boss. Sometimes uh, some of us who are hungry for more power, we very often do not no notice the wash basin, the water pitcher and a towel. And I'm sure the first century disciples had the same question in their mind. Is this how the kings act? Is it how the royalty present themselves? Is it how the one who rules the world behaves? Dr. Frank A. Thomas, one of the mentors at United Theological Seminary where I did my doctoral work, uh, make uh, the comment. Jesus' action calls for a moratorium on arrogance and uh, costs for power, privilege, status and position. Jesus calls for a servant church. His actions suggest that the purpose of power is not for status, privilege or position but for service. The greatest expression of faith is love and service. Monday, Thursday is the Christian holy day falling on the Thursday before Friday, the day of crucifixion and before Easter, the day of resurrection. It commemorates the washing of the feet and the last supper of Jesus Christ with the apostles as described in the canonical gospel. It is the fifth day of the Holy Week and this is the day is followed by Good Friday. All, we all live in a time where we need to experience the unprecedented 
grace. During our observance of this holy week, we remember Christ's final days of life on earth. Like today, those days were filled with moments of high emotions and special significance. Holy week may have new meanings for you this year. We will never, never forget this holy season, this Easter or this Good Friday or this Monday, Thursday in our lifetime. We will remember in a pregnant way of life's green pastures and valleys, the joy and the celebration of life, the anxiety and the pain we experience. In the Gospel of Mark, Gospel chapter 14 verses 12 onwards we read in this manner, on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciple asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters. The teacher asked, where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? His, uh, he will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparation for us there. The disciples left and went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Uh, when evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve, following the man bearing a pitcher of water, which is actually the exact story what we see. We, we, which is a leading uh, narration even in the Mark Gospel. Follow the man bearing a pitcher of water. This tells us the need of the church during this hour, this minute, and this day. Come back to the cross. Come back to a servant mindset. When it uh, comes to the kingdom of God and the service of huma service to humanity let me tell you my friends the menial job is already done the most menial job is to be or become a sacrificial lamb on the cross of Calvary it is already done even if you say that I take the most hard job in the church or in the kingdom it is friends let me tell you it is already done two powerful things happened during this week in connection with Jesus washing the feet and the last supper of Jesus Christ while I was living in the Bahamas in Nassau Bahamas and there was a saying among the Bahamians that I was the Indian there then they say I was the Indian there what that means or by that phrase is that simply means I was the one who's doing all the work and the rest of them were enjoying the party Washing one's feet make both in the both in a vulnerable position. Where it makes me to be a servant, servanthood is an important part in building our community or to have a true koinonia or a true fellowship. One of the true servant um, nurture nature of the church is found in the table of the Lord. What we are experiencing in our world today is our own plan and God has an eraser. He just erased all our plans and we are being on a standstill for the last couple of weeks. Whoever wants to become a great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be a slave to of all. The Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew, Mark chapter 10. My friends, my beloved, especially those who are at this, uh, you know, part of this uh, following the liturgical calendar knows that today is the Monday, Thursday. We actually 
uh, uh, see this too significant even than happen in the history uh, in the in the in the life of Christ and in the life of disciples friends let's have a servant heart let's have let our church and community develop a servant mindset just like Jesus noticed it let's notice the, the water pitcher pitcher the towel and the wash basin let's pray pray with me Dear Lord God, the gospel is the most uh, uh, counterintuitive, uh, paradigm shattering, unprecedented grace, worldview transforming force in the history. We know our greatness in the kingdom of God is not based on power, privilege, fame or popularity. It is measured in terms of being a servant. This revolutionary truth contradicts our most basic instinct to serve our own personal interest. As ordinary radicals of our your kingdom representatives, help us to wash one another's feet and help us to uh, change our hearts. Let your unprecedented grace, revolutionary grace, or counterintuitive power, the paradigm shattering uh, grace, or the power of your gospel, Lord Jesus, turns upside down. Let it turn upside down of our life, O oh God. Or oh, let your unprecedented grace uh, run downhill and remove our pride and soften our hearts, O oh God. Lord, make us your true servant. We ask this in the most powerful and wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen.